Oh boy. Oh man. We are about two hours later than they were supposed to deliver the car, but that's okay. My nerves have been on edge. We are about to take delivery of the 2002 Corvette Z06. She's got a little bit of damage, but we're gonna see firsthand. This is the first time Jarrett and I have seen the car in person, and it's the moment we're taking delivery of it. We have no choice. We have to accept what we get. Hopefully they're not hiding much damage. On the count of three, the car is gonna show up for you guys. One, two, Sad. I am sad. I'm, I'm mad. Sad. It's a beautiful day out though. Beautiful yeah, sunset. Yeah. Holy shit. That's it. It was like, oh, we hear it. Oh, it's a truck. Hello. Hey. hey. Ricardo. Yeah, Rob. It was sight unseen. We didn't even see it. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen the car. <laughs> The, the hard top, like the, the fixed roof thing, it looks pretty sick. You just want it to be an RX-7. I know, I want it to be an RX-7. <laughs> yeah, front tire's out of air, but that's, that's, we saw it in the pictures. That sounds really good. falling over. <laughs> I shouldn't, should I be this excited? Like, am I allowed to be this excited? <laughs> it's a car, it's a car. I'm a car enthusiast. American engineering, it sounds good. It's basically the first gen of my V. It looks like an RX-7. <laughs> <laughs> Come on guys, give me something. Let me, let me have this moment. The side mirrors, that's definitely RX-7. The RX-7 came out years before the C5. Fucking stolen from the RX-7, stolen. That's what it is. Oh, but the, the fixed roof thing actually looks really cool. I originally wanted the T-top. This looks really, really cool. Now all of this, this fiberglass and weird monstrosity is wrapped around the arguably most important part of the car. A LS, an LS, an A LS. 5.7 liter LS6, it's a V8. It is not a rotary. This is, this is the heart of the car. What we're gonna be doing all in this video is looking at the whole thing as a package. Obviously, we bought this car. This is kind of the center focal point of it, but there's a vehicle attached, and I wanna see what we can do with that, and if we can salvage parts off of it, or do whatever. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of cool to see a whole car all together in pieces. Something that catches my attention right off the bat, this is bent, meaning that that's crushed in. Is that worried? Rim rails bent. We didn't. This is literally the first time we've looked at the car. Oh, dude, this can buff out. Get get my uh, get my buffing rag. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. It's trash. You totally. You're like, uh, very clearly, my professional diagnosis is shit got fucked. This is meant to be something like that. You know what makes me feel really good about that? The frame doesn't. Look actually damaged. This is in, oh, it, okay, got hit a little bit. Yeah, the frame's damaged. <laughs> oh boy. Oh man. That's not supposed to be here. Let's see. There's no dimpling on that side. I don't know Corvette frames at all, but off the top of my head. See right there? The dimpling, the little bit right in there. That's a little, that's dimpled. It bent, like there's curves that shouldn't be there. That's very evident by the fact that this is like trying to be squeezed inward. What's funny is it doesn't look bad up here, but back here it looks really bad. Obviously, this bit of damage should have been repaired. So it's gotta be frame damaged, but we, <laughs> this is the first time we've looked at the car. Good, good out new Rob. Might as well just jack it up and see what's going on. You know what I'm gonna have to do, right? Just gonna have to rip it off. So many clips and things that'll be useful. So like I was expecting, like with the with the Diablo when it hit, it shattered the control arms. Like they're aluminum, you know, they're cast aluminum. This isn't any better. So why are the control arms fine, 
This car took a hit. Yeah, they definitely didn't replace the control arms. They're clearly old. You know, the car obviously hasn't been driven since. The arms look fine. The next best thing is to this one, this one hurts. This one hurts me to do. It's already broken two days away, right? Oh my god. Ah. Oh. You psychopath. Being a forensic scientist, the damage occurred somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> We're in this area. Now that we've got a good clear view of the frame, I'm gonna set it back down and see if we can see the frame shape or anything like that. Not that I'm any sort of expert, and we'll see what it does. On a car like this, or a car like the RX-7, they're unibody for the most part. They just have two massive rails that are built into the body. This car's a little bit different, obviously. I, I don't claim to be an expert in the Corvette, but it is pretty similar. Same two frame rails on the sides, but it's not body on frame like a uh, truck. But you know what? Out of all of this, out of everything that we've done, I wanna know if the tire holds air. <laughs> I, just, I just need to know, I just need to know. Good news is about this car, there are parts for days compared to the RX-7s where you have whatever, 13, 14,000 of the third gens ever introduced into the United States. That's abysmal, there were the same number of uh, first gen insights, whatever. But this, there's uh, everybody that you know has somebody that they know that has a C5 vet. And so I don't expect this to be difficult to find parts for this. Zero pounds of boost in Zero the tire. pounds? Zero pounds. And the tire in this, this broken tire, is making the same amount of boost as my uh, three-rotor RX-7 did. You can hear it going into the tire, and you can hear the tire leaking out. Oh, 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 you hear that? Oh, dude, it's working. Is it? Look at... Oh, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear it straight up leaking out of the back. On a very, very random side note, guess where these brake rotors and these brake calipers and all of that, guess where else you'll find those in this garage? The four rotor. These, you could replace the four rotors, brake rotors and calipers and everything off of this car right here. We are at 17 PSI. Uh, there's no tread in the middle left. They put tire shine on them to sell a salvage vehicle. <laughs> so now all the tires are inflated. She at least looks like she's sitting pretty. We got fired up. We got fired up, right? Yeah, we we're, got fired, we're fired up. up. I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I need a moment. Rob, you good over there? What, dude? Hey. Oh, we're ready. We're good. We're good. Uh, we we're supposed to start up the Corvette. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. That was what? An hour ago? Oh, we're going to cannibalize this car even more. The vet actually has an Optima yellow top, but I highly, highly doubt that that has been taken care of properly. We're going to connect the battery that is very much dead. Get this to the frame somewhere. Right here? No, oh, yeah. I don't know. Good bitch. Fucking noob. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Piece of shit. Jared, edit that video out. Uh, there was something else wrong with that shot, so uh, go ahead and edit that out. Oh yeah, I forgot. The transmission's in the back. That's one of the weirdest things about this. So there's some sort of linkage from here to the transmission in the back. Ew. It sounds as hard as the clutch is. This guy's so upgraded to like a stage three clutch. Okay, so it looks like both my batteries are actually having a hard time, but Fired that thing up to 15 amps. It's so, oh, oh, what the hell was that? Dude, there's like a dildo in here, feel this. No, right here, push down. Oh God. Yeah, I was just penetrated by the seat. Uh, the check engine light is on. What the hell is a check gauge? The red one, yep. Check gauges? Somebody, G-A-G-E-S. Interesting. It feels like I'm about to be yelled at by my dad for sitting in his car. <laughs> we got half tank of gas, half pack of cigarettes, it's dark, we're wearing sunglasses. Let's go. So, a dad car. A dad was listening to dad music. Oil pressure, they, that's gauges. They decided to neglect a U. Oil temp 120, coolant temp 126, battery volts 14, and we got zero PSI boost on our oil pressure. <laughs> Oh, you let me down. You let me down. No! No! <laughs> Let's get the insight. It's so... So ghetto. Obviously the stock battery's trash. It's much better like fitment. We can give it all she's got. <laughs> We're trying to get two small batteries to start one big car. 
Somebody is absolutely cringing looking at this. <laughs> so now we have two batteries and a tender. We're gonna start this damn car. What a weird last two hours this has been for us. The easiest part of the video is starting the car when we've already seen it start. Not so easy. Finding out, not so easy. We've tried a variety of vehicles. We've tried a variety of batteries. It takes an LS to start an LS. We're gonna back up the V. I'm not gonna even make a comment about the reliability here, but uh, it's pretty much pretty clear that uh, that's our hero in this situation. This is literally two hours of my life gone starting cars. To make fun of both these cars, they've both taken some L's with their battery life and their uh, tire pressure. The downside to this is this motor sounds beautiful. It's a whatever, 6.2 liter, massive, supercharged V8. Uh, it's going to overshadow this car. So what we're gonna do is start it with this one, turn this one off and you get to hear the beauty. And the E85 that's coming out of this is uh, Actually kind of delicious tasting, but let's keep our lives long, right? Wow! I couldn't help it, I got right back to it, because when you get a new car, you get all excited and want to learn everything about it, and here's what I found out. The place where this car took an impact was not where I expected, and it, it kind of adds up after you think about it. When you see that the whole car is bent upward like this, I thought, well, okay, maybe it didn't get hit from the front. Maybe it didn't get hit from the side. It got hit from the bottom. The first thing I noticed was the frame here. These two bolts, nobody would design a car like this to have the bolts angle upward like this. This one and that one. So those bolts were meant to be level. I then looked at the height of this part of the frame to the same one on the other side, and this part was way higher than the other side, which made me look under here. There's impact all up at this angle, coming up from the bottom, upward at an angle like this. But it's it's the frame getting hit like this, as if the person hit like a K-rail or something that was on the ground, like concrete or whatever, and the car hit it and buckled the chassis upward. That could be fixed. I, I believe you know, we could even cut it off there, fix it. I don't know how a uh, salvage repair works. Yeah, so on this side, same kind of concept here. This took some damage too. Now, mind you, that's a really thin piece of hanger. I don't feel like that can get hit and cause tons of structural damage. It shows that whoever hit this car hit it hard on this side. We're gonna take a look at the frame more, but I get a company to take a look at it. Just I'm so curious as to see what this did. I'm gonna let the battery condition overnight and using this, set it to AGM, which is something glass mat uh, with these sealed batteries. This one's good, but this one was, as you saw earlier, zero volts, nine volts at best. We're reading 12.8. And so I'm hoping the yellow top comes back because yellow tops are really expensive, which would be nice, be really nice. So we're gonna throw this one back in the car and see if she starts finally with the battery all set up. So this is just for me. Okay, I heard the door unlock. Let's see if we can get this car started. Definitely thinks it's being stolen. Sounding good. This is all off the battery by itself. Oh, well, there you go. That is a very healthy sounding engine to me. Good oil pressure. Battery voltage is good, of course. This is a really weird experience overall, just being in this car. <laughs> that sounds so different. There you go. 